In this video, I'll be going through five different styles of POV shots to create cinematic videos. Method one, placing your camera inside of or on top of something. Placing your camera inside an object is a really unique way to create a POV shot that your viewers probably aren't expecting. One really cool way to capture this kind of shot, and you may have seen this online already, is the bag shot. And it's as simple as it sounds. Place your camera inside the bag, hit record, and then zip the bag up. Then just open up the bag and you can either pull the camera out or you can pull an object out that was next to the camera, depending on what sort of video you're going for. Pulling out the camera may work better for a fashion style video or a music video, whereas pulling out an object that was near the camera would probably work better for a narrative video. You can of course put it inside other objects like cupboards, wardrobes, drawers. You can also put your camera onto objects. For example, here I've put it onto my robot vacuum and it's giving a perspective of the subject me from the point of view of the vacuum. The car suction cup mount. There's been a big dogs trend going around on TikTok and Instagram where people are using suction cup mounts on their cars and putting a reel together to this song. Now I can't obviously play it because it'll get demonetized, but if you guys want to give it a listen, link is in the description below. I love the song and I even made my own reel which you can see playing here. And these kinds of shots are really sick to get. They're a little you're worried when you're capturing them because you're driving your car and you're going fast and you're trusting that the suction cup can hold your X thousand dollar camera safely. And yeah, it's, it's a little nerve wracking, but with the shots, the shots are worth it. The reason these shots are so interesting is because showing your subject going for a drive can look like this. Now there's nothing wrong with it, but it could be so much better. For instance, if we shot it like this. Keep dreaming, stay hard, stay focused, be a dog. Yeah, don't let them take what you want. Yeah, even when times get dark. Keep dreaming, stay hard, stay focused, be a dog. Yeah, don't let them take what you want. Yeah, even when times get dark. Pull me, I'm with the cheese. I'm pulling up and I feel like a beast. I'ma just take what I want and I take what I wish. And that's just really how it To get these extra shots, we had to get a suction cup mount. Now you can get one from newer or from Tilta, both on Amazon. The ones I'm using are from newer, they are $50, and on top of that, I'm using these smaller ones, also for newer, but they're actually for the Insta360 X4. It's like a three suction cup rig, and that allowed me to get this kind of shot. But I actually use it as a little support mount for my S9 when I have that attached with the bigger, newer suction cup mount. If you're looking to do a car edit, this is a great type of shot to throw in because it's a unique perspective and going fast in a car can be very hard to capture, but if it's attached to the car, it's just a really cool perspective. Method three, using a magic arm with a clamp. Some of you may already know of a rig that Mike Visuals did with Small Rig, and he made this really cool POV rig magic arm sort of thing that allows you to attach your camera on one end and whatever object you want on the other. Now this is a really, really cool piece of gear and I don't have one yet and I'm not knocking it, but it is $100. That's actually not too bad. But if you're looking to have something on the more budget friendly side of things, you could just actually use one of these, which is a regular magic arm with a clamp on the end. And I think they retail for like $30 on Amazon. A key difference here being that the Mike Visuals X small rig piece of gear has a much longer arm arm, which actually gives you room to set up the shot how you want it. You can have it closer or you can have it way further away. With a magic arm, it's it's not that long. With this $30 magic arm and clamp combo, we're going to attach my camera to a variety of objects and get some unique POV style shots with them. The best thing I think this works with is objects that are known to move. So drones, for example, work great here because they fly around. So you can literally just spin around with your camera clamped onto the drone and then you can frame this out properly in post or you you can actually use Photoshop AI to frame by frame <laughs> remove the clamp from the shot and get something that looks pretty decent. Now I think an easier way is to just frame it out, but if you really want to show the entire drone, then if you've got Photoshop, you can do it that way. Of course, we can do more than this. We could also just attach our camera onto various objects that can move. A really simple one would be having the camera attached to a cupboard and opening it, or attaching it to the top of a door frame and having it point straight down for a top down shot. But an even cooler thing you can attach it to is an electric longboard. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
method four, the snorri cam shot. A snorri cam shot looks like this, and it typically it's used in Hollywood to give a distorted point of view shot of the subject, usually when they're drunk or they've been drugged or something, and it's like that whoa, trippy, like out of body experience kind of, kind of shot. It's a very cool shot, but it can be kind of difficult to pull off. Either you need to get the really expensive Hollywood level rig that you know has counterbalances on your back and like a big padded vest there are alternatives on amazon They're, they range from like 100 to 200 dollars and they're fine i haven't actually used one personally but i've seen other creatives use them and they look really good but there's an even cheaper way if you have a tripod already then this will cost you no dollars all you need are two belts and a tripod. First, you're gonna to wanna to wear something with a belt. Next, we're gonna take our tripod and extend the legs, and we're gonna extend two of the three legs further than the other one. So it looks like this. Take your second belt and tie it around the three legs around your waist so it stays on your body. This allows you to move your arms freely. Of course, if you don't have a second belt, you can just hold the tripod legs with one arm. And if you only need one arm free in the shot, then this can work pretty well. Like what I did here where I held my backpack with one arm. That's kind of a typical thing to see people doing. So I thought it'd be acceptable here, but you want to make it not too obvious that you're holding the tripod when doing a snorri cam shot just to help sell the look a little bit more. So if you can do it the two belt method way, but if you can't, this can still work pretty well as well. Now I'm currently working on a video with this sack backpack and for this video I really wanted to get a POV shot of the backpack on my back. Now doing this method for the snorri cam shot was very difficult when doing it from behind because you're having to place it behind which is difficult in itself and then make sure the angle is correct and like reset if it's not correct and try again and try again. Now you can get a really cool looking shot here but Using this method, I 100% had to hold both tripod legs with both of my hands. So if you're gonna do it this way, you'll probably wanna do it in a way where you don't see your arms or whatever you're trying to show is probably a backpack or a helmet. So it doesn't really matter if your arms aren't in the shot. But nevertheless, still a very cool POV shot that you can do on a budget. Method five, the classic POV shot using an action camera. The GoPro style shots have been around for years and I personally use an Osmo Action 4. And these shots are the tried and tested way of capturing any POV style shot. One of the best things about using an action camera is the accessories you can get and the ways they allow you to mount the camera. This means it's really easy to attach the camera to your head, to your chest, to your wrist, and even more other ways that you can find any other accessory for. You can of course do these kinds of shots with a larger mirrorless camera, but it becomes a bit more complex because of the camera you're using. A bigger camera means it weighs more, which means you have to have a mount or a rig that is capable of holding that camera. So for example, if I wanted to mount my S9 onto my head, I'd probably have to use a helmet. And that would then involve having a counterbalance on the back of my head to balance out the weight and some sort of wireless way to monitor the video. But it's more complex than just putting a headband on with the Osmo. That's, that's way easier. You can also do all the previous methods we discussed in this video way more easily with an action camera because it's so small and lightweight. But it is always more impressive to mount a larger mirrorless camera onto whatever it is you're mounting onto because you'll get a better shot. Obviously action cameras are great because they're tiny, but the type of shot you can get with a mirrorless camera, you just can't beat that with an action camera. Those are my top five methods for great POV shots for a cinematic video. And if you guys like this video, take a look at this video over here where you can learn five Hollywood level gimbal shots. Yeah, that was a good one.